How you doing everybody? Nick here and today I'm going to show you how simple and easy it is to take a piece of audio in Ableton Live, chop it up into different clips that you can then use in a live performance if you want to, in some song creation, or just come up with something new to jam along with. Let's get going. I have a brand new live set open right here and I'm going to drag a piece of audio into it. I was lucky enough to do a video on a killer DW Purple Heart drum kit a while back and this is the audio I'm gonna use for this demonstration today. Let's make it big so we can see it. Also, I'm gonna get rid of these default tracks here. So just the one piece of audio is there to make it easy for us to see. Double click on the clip and then it opens up down here in the edit window on the bottom. Let's first check out the audio so you can hear what we're gonna be working with. Very cool sounding drum kit, and this will be nice and easy to chop up. One thing that's going to make it very easy for me to cut up this audio is that I already know that the BPM of this clip is 96 BPM because I recorded it to a click when I recorded this drum track. So let's make sure that the global BPM here at live is the same BPM as the clip. So the clip is 96 BPM. I'm just going to switch this to 96, and that's going to make life a lot easier. The next thing I'm going to do here is hit the warp button. And when you hit the warp button for any piece of audio, Live analyzes that piece of audio and puts in transient markers or warp markers. This will make it very easy for us to cut right on the grid, especially since we know this piece of audio is 96 BPM, like I just said. Now let me show you a couple things down here in the edit window. One very important piece right here is the play start marker and the play end marker. Triangles rule the world here in Ableton Live. They're all over the place. This one's very important. So wherever you put this play start marker is where the audio is going to play from, right? So let's do that. There you go. If I move it down here in the middle somewhere, it's going to play from that point. And so on. Same with the end. Wherever you put the end marker, it will not play any audio past that. So the first thing I'm going to do is cut the drum fill intro part. Let's go to beat number two. It's only a bar long. Let's put the out marker right at beat number three. And now it'll only play that one bar. There you go. Now this is where the easy part of chopping it up into different parts comes in. Now just copy and paste that clip down to the next clip slot. There's a couple ways to do that, of course. You can highlight it, hit Command-C on your keyboard, go to the open clip slot, hit Command-V, and it's there. Or you can highlight the clip slot, and on my MacBook Pro here, I hit the Option button. I think it's the Alt button if you have a PC. Grab it, hold the Alt button, and then just drag it down. That's a really easy way to copy and paste something again. So now that clip slot's down there. All we have to do is move the start and stop points to a different section, and you'll have another clip. So I'm just going to go to the next bar, bar three, where the drum groove sort of starts, make it two bars long. Let's hear that one. Now it's only playing those two bars. Now's a really good time to make a loop out of the clip. Your loop markers are just above the start and stop markers in the edit window here. See, I'm moving the loop start point around here. The end of it's way down at the end of this piece of audio. Let's make the loop markers the same length, which is just two bars here. Hit the loop on button. Then that loop marker will become colored like the same color as your clip. And now it'll loop those two bars. Check it out. You have it. Okay, let's move on and cut up another piece. Again, copy and paste the clip down to another clip slot. I'm going to turn the loop marker off because I don't know if I'm going to want the next section to be looped or not, but let's go find another piece. How about down around bar number nine? What's this sound like when I start it? Here, how about this? Let's start right on that drum fill. I think that's bar number 10. There we go. That's a bar long, so I'll put the end marker to uh, B 
be 11. Now, I think this might be fun to loop this a couple of times. So let's move our loop points over. One bar long, turn the loop on. And here you go, let's play this part. <laughs> Sounds really good. Okay, let's do the same thing again. Copy and paste down to another clip slot. Let's find something down a little bit farther, turning my loop markers off. I don't know, what's it sound like on bar 13? That's a good two bars. Gonna keep that. Nice. Now let's try something different. Up to this point, I've just been cutting right on the bar. You could put the start point anywhere you want. Zoom in. Let's find a different spot to start, maybe on the on an upbeat, in the middle of a bar, and you know, create a different kind of rhythm. Take your start point, and I think I found a spot over here near bar 17. This is sort of like on the 16th note. Uh, let's see, the one E and uh, I'm gonna start on the uh of bar 17. And oh, let's, let's put it on directly on bar 18. It doesn't have to be you know, a, a even amount, like one bar or two bars long. You can make these any length you want in these loops and don't have to worry about putting in like different time signatures or anything like that. It, it'll just read the loop however long you set it. So let's see what this sounds like. Let's make this loop. So I'm gonna move, pull my loop marker down, make it the same length. Here we go, put the loop on. That could be very interesting maybe, so let's keep that. Okay, copy and paste down. Let's do a couple more before we end this uh, tutorial. I'm gonna go down here to the other end, turn the loop off. Let's see what we got down here. How about at this point? Ooh, I like that. Let's see, let's try that one more time. I'm gonna start this right on bar 21. This is a good spot. Very cool. One more to finish off this. Copy and paste one more time. Let's just get the last note at the very end so we have something to end with. Right on beat 26 and it's gonna sound like this. Very cool. So you can see here, I chopped this long piece of audio into one, two, three, four, five, six different clips. And now I can play and start and stop them in any order I want. And let's see what it sounds like. Here we go, starting at the top. So much fun and so easy to do. One quick thing I wanna mention here about how I played the clips, if you've never done this before, after you've chopped all your clips up, you might have noticed that I hit the play button of another clip and it waited to get like to the next bar before it played the next clip. And that's because I have the global quantization set to one bar. That's right up here next to your tap, your tempo, your time signature, right up here in your metronome. You can set this to one bar as the default setting. You can set it to a half a bar, a triplet, 32nd note, two bars, four bars, eight bars, all kinds of stuff, or even none. One bar is pretty simple. So what that means is whenever I play a clip, as long as I hit another play button of another clip before the bar ends, when it gets to the downbeat of the next bar, it will play that other clip. This clip I have selected right here is two bars long. Let me play that clip. Now, 
I can restart this clip in the middle of it as long as I hit the play button again before it gets the downbeat of the next bar. See what I'm saying? So you can hit that next play button anywhere in that bar and when it gets to the next downbeat, it will trigger the next clip or it'll restart the clip you already in, anything like that. This clip is also doesn't have a loop connected to it, so it'll only play that length. If I want this clip to keep looping, I'll just make sure I hit the play button again before it reaches the end of the clip. So again, whatever you have this global quantization set to, as long as you hit the play button of the next thing you want to trigger before the end of the bar, it will trigger it right on the next downbeat. Okay? Makes it super simple. And again, you can adjust it to however is more comfortable to you. And again, one bar is the default setting. Now, what I suggest you do at this point is get some sort of MIDI controller to start and stop the clips however you see fit. Something like this, the IK Multimedia Blue Board, which is a foot controller, Bluetooth MIDI controller that you use with your feet. Uh, any MIDI keyboard that you have that has pads, or you can put them on the keys, uh, even on your computer keyboard. You can map how you start and stop the clips, which clips you want to play. You can map an up and down arrow, so you can go up to one clip, start that, go down to the three clips down, start that one, back up to the other one, in any order you want. So you can really get creative with your songs that you've already recorded, other songs you can chop up, Anything you want to chop up and manipulate and get creative with, you can easily do in Ableton Live. I hope you like this video, this short tutorial, and I hope it encourages you to make music with Ableton Live. It is a fantastic DAW and so much fun to use. Thanks for watching, everybody.